Hello and welcome to a, the first of a new video series that I'm starting uh, that I'm calling Power BI Tales from the Front. And in these videos, I'm going to be doing walkthroughs of solutions from the Power BI community or from other sources. Um, if you aren't already a member and participating in the community, I definitely encourage you to do that at community.powerbi.com. Um, it's a great place to get help if you need it. Um, certainly, if you're more experienced, you can help others. Uh, you can also pick up tips from how others approach solutions to problems, and it's a great place to sharpen your skills. And if you're newer to Power BI, it's also a good place to, to see what's possible. Uh, my name is Pat Mahoney. Uh, I started Hoosier BI. Uh, I'm not a BI professional. I sort of do data as a hobby, um, but I also provide free Power Platform training for Indianapolis nonprofits. Uh, here's my contact info. If you like this video, uh, please subscribe. I have a bunch more planned uh, in this first one, um, which I would sort of classify as a basic degree of difficulty. And this will be a DAC solution that we're talking about today is uh, one that you commonly see in the community where people are getting um, what they consider to be the wrong total um, in table or matrix visuals. Um, so let's jump to the, the scenario and talk more about it. Um, and basically what people experience is, yeah, I, I get, I make a table or a matrix and I see uh, the correct total. Um, but when I do more complex uh, measures, for example, uh, the, the total looks incorrect. And this is certainly the most frequently asked question or issue I see in the Power BI community and, and, and what I've seen so far. So let's walk through a simple example on how to deal with this. Um, so. I've created this real simple data table, so it's real easy to see what the answer should be uh, without uh, having to do a lot of analysis. Um, so we just got a simple like product table here uh, where we're having some some metric uh, and with regard to these five different products that belong in two different categories. And if we make a simple table visual, as shown here, and if we have a real simple measure, some measure where we're just taking the sum of this column and drop that into the visual, uh, everything behaves as expected, that we would see the sum of category one is three, and category two is six, and the total is nine. Okay, well, if we take a second measure, and just take that first measure, same expression there, and just add one to it, uh, and you add that to the visual, you can, you can see the uh, problem sometimes people see. And so what this one does is it takes the sum, and it adds one to it, so it works as expected on category one and category two, where we get three plus one is four, six plus one is seven. But in the total, um, you might expect it to be 11, seven plus four, and that's not uh, the case. The reason that is, is that totals in Power BI are actually not totals at all. It's the result of your measure um, without any filters coming from the rows or, or columns if it's a matrix. Um, so it's really better to call these as all rows instead of um, uh, a total. For simple measures, it works out that way, and it's actually um, now a possibility to come and change these to be something more meaningful. And so I change that to all rows. Um, in different situations, you can change it to something else. Okay. Um, and so again, what measures are are global formula that calculate locally. And so that's exactly what's happening, you know, down here as well, where it's saying, okay, um, I don't have any filters on category, so I'm going to go ahead and sum the column up, which is what that measure does, uh, sum of this column. So I'm going to get the value of 9 and then add 1 to that, and I get 10. So it's, again, just performing the same measure as in each row, uh, but just without these as a, as a row context. So... Um, how to solve this is to use the iterator functions and with those you can basically create a virtual table for whatever it is you're using in your visual in this case category and evaluate that expression on um, each row of that and then sum up all the results so this is a very common pattern that you'll use uh, to get the totals you expect in a visual and so in this case I'm using this iterator function that's iterating over this virtual table um, of the category column from my from my table, and then for each row on that, 
um, it it uh, calculates that measure. So it's going to go ahead and make a virtual table basically of category one with a result of four, category two with a result of seven. Once that virtual table is created, since this is a sum x, it's going to take the sum uh, of that. And I'm going to get my um, expected result of 11. Okay. Um, and so this, this is a very common pattern that you'll see. Um, what you can also sometimes see is say you have also the um, product column in here as well. And we'll put that up here. And you can see that. Um, again, you don't get the expected result. Um, in this case, you know, since we're adding one to each row, we would uh, expect to get a value of 14 here, but we get a result of 11. Okay. Um, so in this case, um, what we can do is use the summarize function instead of the values function. So if we show this measure here, and I'll get rid of some cat values, and put this one in its place. Summarize can be used basically as a multi-column values, right? So you get the distinct combination of all the categories and products uh, and put that in there. And in this case, you get your expected result of 14. Okay. Um, and so again, between, uh, you can use it with other functions as well. So min x, max x, average x, um, you can get the same um, functionality where it'll iterate over this virtual table. In this case, it's a two-column virtual table, uh, and then uh, you put the, the measure there. Now, it's really important that you put this in measure form and not just in the expression form. Um, so, if, for example, if we had written this as, you know, sum of metric plus one, um, oops, Uh, we would actually not get the correct result. And you see we get a result of 50 here. And that's basically because it's iterating all five of these rows. Um, but because we don't have a measure here, or this is not wrapped in a calculate to trigger context transition, you actually get the sum of all the rows um, for each iteration. right? So, so you get um, you know, the 5 times the 10, um, or, or 50. So you either need to put the measure there or wrap this in a calculate to get the desired result. So if we do it like that, this is equivalent to um, having uh, just putting the measure there because when you put a measure in an expression uh, like that, it is implicitly wrapped in a calculate and so therefore still triggers uh, context transition. Okay, so that's a quick walkthrough of how to get your totals as expected. Um, and just I made some, some key points here. I originally had tended to show those at the end, so I made these buttons here. Um, but again, you know, totals in tables or matrices are not actually totals, um, but they're, they're kind of all rows. So they're the same evaluation of your matrix, but in the context without any of the filters that come from the columns in your table or matrix. Um, and so the, the easiest way to fix this is with the iterator functions. You end up using these all the time, uh, where, again, you can iterate over a virtual table using values or distinct. Um, in this case, values and distinct would have been equivalent. Um, and the only difference is if you have a model where the blank row is present. And so that's a topic for a different day. But in most models, if you have matching values between all of your tables, um, then you won't have a blank row, and you'll get the same results there. And again, summarize is a great way to do sort of a multi-column uh, values where you can get the distinct combination of, of multiple columns, uh, two or more. Um, and also, I showed you before that you can replace that's uh, the text that's there. So instead of just total, you can make it uh, something more meaningful to explain what's going on there. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed the first of these videos. Um, again, please subscribe. I have a bunch more of these planned, and and based on the how much people like it. We'll see how many we do. Uh, so please go ahead and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.